Hey, Jason Bahari here. Here recently I've had a lot of requests to go over my gun and a couple of requests to go over some of the gear that I use. Uh, so I got some stuff laid out here on the table and uh, I'll do a little walkthrough for it. So we'll start out with my gun. This is a double barrel that I built uh, using some Neptonics parts and some Spear Guides parts. I know a lot of people have been watching the last couple videos and I've had a lot of comments asking about it, so I'm going to go over it for you. This gun I built almost a year ago and it's pretty beat up. It was kind of like a trial run, probably the third one I think that I've made. So it's not the prettiest gun in the world, but it definitely kills some fish. What I do differently than how it was designed is I actually cut this double trigger mechanism down to be able to slide this other trigger right in through that little slot that they originally have. They have this designed for a push rod setup. So this top trigger would normally be back behind where this one would end. This next one could start. So I think I have my trigger set up probably five, six inches further forward than what it was designed for, but it makes the two setups a lot closer in size. That way you can use the same size shaft. You can see down here, these are the same exact length shafts and one is just about three inches longer than the other one. And that's just because this trigger mechanism is forward about three inches versus the top one. Next up, I'm gonna go over my line system. At the moment, I have two lines, one for the top and one for the bottom rigged up. The one for the top is set up with a ring and it's actually set up for free shafting right now because I have the ring on the, the uh, line anchor. I have two bungees, one for each one, and that's just to keep everything tight. And then I have a screw back here behind the line release that holds holds my wrap. That way, whenever I go to load the gun, I don't have to worry about it catching on anything forward. The bottom trigger comes with a line release that I could build into the gun. It just doesn't allow the gun or the trigger to operate smoothly, so I don't even install it. And I have found that you can just put it over top of one of the shark fins and use that for your line release. You can load right over top of it. I only use one wrap anyway, so it's not a big deal. You can load two wraps and then still be able to load a band. I've never done it, so I don't know how much entanglement issues you would have, but I'm, I'm sure you could probably get by. And that one is rigged up with a ring as well, so I could take it off, but I don't have another screw down there because this is a shorter line and then this one. And I'm not sure if there's enough stretch, which I wouldn't want that much clutter up here anyway. So I basically have this one just rigged uh, bottom shaft with a line on it all the time. And I have this rigged up for when I was using some power heads the other day. These ones screw onto my shaft and there was no need to free shaft with that power head, which you can anyway. I could always take this line off and, uh, and free shaft both of them if I wanted to and just have the have the one line to switch back and forth if I needed to pull something out of the hole. But this way is set up pretty cool because you can free shaft the top shaft. And then if something comes up like a cobia or African pompano, or even you get into a deep cave or under structure that is deeper than the length of your shaft, I could just switch to my bottom, my bottom trigger or my bottom shaft and shoot it with that. And I have a line automatically. You don't have to sit there and worry about trying to slide that ring over top of it. Uh, the way that I have it rigged, I have one band on bottom, two bands on top. I usually just use one band on top unless I'm just go I'm first going down and I'm targeting bigger fish or if there's a gag or something way out in the sand and he's not really letting me get close, I can, uh, I can throw that second band on. Not a, not a problem at all. So I've got the gun flipped back over to the other side so you can see it can hold a spare shaft on it. I typically don't dive with that. 
I guess in certain circumstances I would, but most of the time I don't really care to have the extra weight in it. Um, but I, I throw these uh, spare shaft holders on there just because it's really not that much and it doesn't get in the way. And I, I even just use it to throw my spare shaft on the side of the gun, you know, when I'm traveling in the truck or, you know, going to other people's boats, I can bring my spare shaft and it's easy to keep track of until I get into the boat and everything's situated and we'll put them, put them where all the extra shafts go, wherever they keep them. You know, a lot of people keep them on the floor or they have some shaft holders on the boat. Um, but this reason right here is the reason why I started doing the tie on bands. Cause I had a bunch of requests for, um, to be able to carry a third shaft on the gun. You know, a lot of people like to have that. So tying these in instead of having them go through the gun, so if you had this band coming from the from the middle of the the gun and this band coming from the middle of the gun, it would crisscross right there, and your that third shaft would never be able to be installed on there. It would just pop out every single time you shot the gun because this would be, I mean, it would literally have a band underneath of it. Um, it also makes it really nice having those tie-on bands to be able to get to this ring. Because before, when I did the bands, uh, you know, traditional style through the hole into the side of the gun, this line anchor would have to be way back here to be able to even get your fingers into there with two loaded bands. You know, if you had the top and bottom loaded at one time, you'd, it was struggling to get into there. Now this band will sit straight flat like that, and that one will sit straight flat like that on the top and bottom, and you have all of the sides open. These are a little bit of a pain in the butt because they've got a lot of flexibility right here. And then sometimes whenever you're loading loading the shaft in there, the shark fins will catch that and they kind of tangle up with each other a little bit. So once you get over, over that issue, um, it works out great. I mean, this is, this is a downfall of the system, but this would be your, your advantage. And I think the advantage of it is way better than the downfall. Um, it was way, way simpler when I did one band on top and one band on bottom, and I didn't even have the extra band up there. And if you're just messing around with gags and snapper, that would probably be the way that I would run it. But now that I'm dealing with some bigger fish, um, I, I use the second band and deal with the headache. I'm sure you guys are noticing all these holes that I have drilled in here, and this is just different things that I've tried out to mount a flashlight on the side of my gun. I had this kill spike on there, which I just took off earlier today because I don't even use it. I had that on there last. Before, I had a block of wood, which my buddy did one with a Koa spare shaft holder, like the back end of it that you normally have at the butt of the gun. These ones have it built in on the butts that I use. But the koas would typically go like right here. Well, he used one of those and drilled it out and he was able to stick an ocean rhino flashlight into the, I think he had to drill it out maybe a little bit, but into the insert part of that. And he has that mounted on his gun permanently and it works out pretty good. It's a little bit dim for me. I like a bigger light, but it's better than nothing. I tried that to begin with. Like I said, it was a little dim. So I went to this for my uh for my big blue on here but i don't really use that either because i have a clip hanging off my big blue and i'm always afraid when i stick my gun all the way up underneath the structure if the line does catch that clip and my lights off i don't really i don't want to deal with that so i've just been holding the light for now i'll probably go back to putting like one of the ocean rhinos on here again and just have it have it to stick in the holes anyway it might not be optimal but it's better than nothing. And I'll just hold the big blue by hand like I have been. I got a couple more things to go over down here. These uh, these grips I make myself. I pour them out of epoxy. I have all kinds of grips over here. This is the only one that I really care for right now. It's going to my buddy over in the East Coast. Um, all of these are basically just trial runs that I may or may not use. I don't know. I've got them over there. If you can look here, this is an aluminum screw that comes with the handles, um, and I do not like them at all. I've broke several of these, and obviously this one is all corroded up. This one's stainless steel, um, and both of these are stainless steel that I get on Amazon, and I like these much better. 
this one is still aluminum because I basically had to strip some parts to get some guns out and my gun ends up being sacrificed when it's all said and done. Uh, so I need to switch that out to a stainless one and I'll be happy. Um, I've got, if you can see right here underneath the gun, behind the handle, this is lead that I have poured into the gun. Actually, this one's probably poured out of a mold and then epoxied into there. What this does is it keeps the gun on the bottom when it does not have any shafts in it. It will float straight up with the butt end down uh, with it empty. Now, if it's got a shaft in it, it'll lay sideways on the ground. Yes, this adds weight to the gun, but it adds weight in the good spots to have it. It's behind the handle, so it actually acts as a counterbalance. It's wanting to bring the back end down and lift the front end up. So it actually helps out with the extra weight of the shafts in the long run. Now, when the way that I have the amount of wood on here designed was when I first shot the gun. It, the, the first shaft was out of the gun. The gun, the front end of the gun actually wanted to pick up a little bit with the second shot. And I did not like that at all. I wanted it to stay exactly where I wanted it, you know, where I had it. I didn't want it to lift up. I didn't want to have to push it down. Uh, that'll really throw your shot off if you're trying to do two shots pretty quick. So I shaved a little bit off this, off of both sides. And now I have it perfect where if you shoot that one shaft, it's not going to float up any. So ideally, this is perfect in my opinion because it has enough wood to create as much flotation as I can possibly have without messing up my second shaft. Something differently that I like than most people is I like my line release on the left-hand side of the gun. I've grown up over the years grabbing the line with my left hand. I didn't have a line release for a long, long time, probably like 10 years. And I would always carry the, the line on my pinky. So I would load the gun, then I would reach up to the front of the gun and grab the line with my left hand and bring it back to my pinky, which was on the, on the handle where the trigger is. And I would, I would hold that wrap of line with my pinky. So I really like to have the line release on the left hand side. All of the guns that I make and sell are pretty much right-handed. I can do one left-handed if somebody is either left-handed or like me and likes it on the left-hand side for whatever reason or not. But that's the reason why my spare shaft is on the right and my lines are on the left. Um, typically on a gun that I would sell, all the triggers that I have right now are right-handed. I can order a left-handed, but at the moment, all of them are right-handed. Next up, I'm gonna go over a little bit of my gear haven't had as much interest on this, but a little bit. Most of the interest that I've had is on this shark shield that I have mounted to my fin. Um, and everybody's always curious what the thing is on my fin hanging behind me and the rope and all of this other stuff. But this is a shark shield. I believe it's uh, Freedom 7. I zip tied it. I just poked a couple holes through the straps. It still has the straps on it, so you can still mount it to your leg if you really wanted to. But I just have a couple of zip ties on it. I have one here, and then I have a couple on the whip itself, and then one on the back side. This really slows me down unbelievably. I mean, it is hard to swim fast with that thing on there, especially with so many zip ties. I even had it all the way to the tip, and that was just took way, way too much of the flexibility out of there. I think maybe if I took this one out, it would be a lot better. But at the moment, I have it set up like this, so this thing does not shock me. The way this thing is designed, it puts out electrical impulses, almost like an electric fence. It's very, very um, low voltage, I guess, or a low-grade shock. If this hits you in the leg, it feels like you're having a muscle spasm. And I'm not a big fan of electricity. Um, it's not the end of the world if you get hit by it, but I just don't like it. I had this on my leg and then I think I had this strapped to my fin at one point but this was this was like running right right down the top of my foot pocket and it felt like my foot was on fire when I had it rigged up that way so I didn't do that I had this rigged on my leg without any of the zip ties on there to prevent it from doing that and I kept getting shocked especially on the way down this thing would fall down on me um, when I started to slow down 
when I approach the bottom. Now, if you're swimming hard, it's okay. It's great. Uh, the way I've got it set up, this knob is a little bit hard to turn because you can't get all the way around it because it's obviously a little bit tight right in here, but it can be done. This way, I always have it on me instead of leaving it in the boat. Uh, so if a shark shows up, I usually don't run it on all the time, depending on the conditions. If it's really clear and, you know, we're not in a typical sharky area, I typically don't run it on anyway until one shows up and then I can just reach down and turn it on. And they'll typically back up that way. I've actually seen it turn two sharks. Like I had one coming in hot. He had already made three passes on us. I turned it on. I was completely ready for him with power heads and he was going to get power headed. And I turned this thing on and he made a 90 degree out into the sand and never came back. Um, which is very unusual for sandbar sharks anyway. They typically are one to come right in on you and don't care about any kind of personal space. So here's the power head I showed you earlier. This is it threaded onto, this is my old kill spike or flashlight holder or whatever. It had threads on it. So I'm just showing you how I threaded it on there. Um, I had to drill the back end of this out and tap that hole to fit those threads. I don't, I couldn't find it anywhere where they were already drilled out for five sixteenths. Um, so I just did it myself. I like this style. I'm trying to do this one handed. Which I probably can't do. Anyway, this thing has got O-rings on it. So it slides right out. It slides out a lot better without the safety in there, but there's no reason not to have the safety in it at this point. But yeah, you put your bullet in there and you put it back in and it's ready to go. You pull the safety out and it goes off on impact. This is my little squid, squid ring is what I call it. This is surgical tubing. Um, and I use this to hold my power bullets. I only got three in there just for the sake of argument of showing you the video. I didn't want to fill the whole thing up, but it'll hold 10. Um, and these actually, I have to peel the rubber back a hair to be, even be able to pull them out because it holds it that well. It has a good suction on there, but it works out good. You can hold a bunch of bullets. You're not digging for them in your sleeve or in your glove or anything like that. So I like that. It'll hold, I've never lost a bullet out of here. Um, so yeah, that, that's a good idea. If you, the only reason to use this setup right here is basically if you're doing commercial diving for amber jacks and stuff like that, occasionally you drop down on some big black groupers, but if you're not commercial diving the way that the regulations are set up here, this is basically useless. If you were going to use one here and there, I would use this style here, which this just slides onto my shaft. This is a shotgun shell holder for like a 12 gauge, goes over the butt stock of the gun. I slide this over my wrist and it holds these pretty good. I have lost a couple of them here recently when I switched over to this black pipe. So I'm gonna get like some textured spray paint or whatever and spray the pipe. That way they don't wanna slide out as easily. I think I lost two or three the last trip or the last couple trips anyway. Oh, uh, we'll go into my gear. How I've got it set up and rigged. This is set up for a deeper dive situation where I've got my pony bottle strapped to the back. Back up a little bit so you can see that. I just have a bracket to where it goes underneath one of the one of the tank straps and it holds it on there pretty good. And then I've got it the regulator is set up on a necklace. That way I have this on my neck. This this is ready to go if anything happens to my regulator, if a fish knocks it out of my mouth or mouthpiece comes off or it free flows or whatever else, this is ready to go. Yes, I have 50% in my deco bottle. It is made to get out of decompression faster, but I will use it if something happens at depth. You should be at 70 feet or less to use 50%. Will I jump on it beforehand if I do not have any air in that other tank or something goes wrong? Absolutely. I am jumping on it and going up. Um, I have a whistle on here for safety. I've got my dive knife on here on my inflator hose. I've got a lift bag for anchors. Uh, my computer's on here. I normally have it on my wrist. My flashlight, big blue dive light. It's an awesome light. They work out really good. Rechargeable battery. I just ordered... 
a couple of new batteries for it. That way I can throw it in my box of stuff. That way I never have a dead battery. One battery typically works for all day, no problem. Even lobster diving where you're using it consistently. Um, some, some days I would like to have a spare just in case, but I haven't really come to that problem if I charge it up every time. Uh, this hose right here, this is really cool. Um, this is for this product here. These are lift bags. Um, this is a product made in clear water. And really these are for sending up fish and lobster and whatnot. They're small lift bags. I have zip ties on them for lobsters. You can put a lobster tail on that zip tie and send it up. That way you don't have to hang on to the big lobsters. It's got a little stringer spike in there. You can run it through the eyes of the fish. But this, I don't, let's see if I can do this one handed. This just goes right in here. I don't even know if I got my air on. Probably not, whatever. But anyway, you press this in there and it fills the bag up, no problem. Um, so that's really cool. It's got some Velcro or whatever on it. The original, the original system that I bought had Velcro on it to where you kind of just put this where your stringer was and you just peeled them off as you needed them. I'm actually going to go through because I don't, I lost wherever that went and I lost half of these, um, in somebody's boat somewhere, somehow. I don't know where they're at somewhere. So I'm just going to add some clips to it. Like I've got on this lift bag here and just put them on, put them on like this with that kind of clip. So I will be doing that in the near future. Um, other than that, I think that's all of my gear. That's important anyway. So there you go. So I think that's about everything that I've got for you guys today. Um, I guess feel free to leave a comment if you want to know anything else. I might do another one or two of these here and there. Uh, as you can see, I got some spear guns in the background here and some shafts and stuff like that. I've thought about maybe doing a video on building a spear gun. I know that's it's pretty involved in doing it, so I don't know. I'd probably have to get a better setup or get some kind of tripod or something like that for my GoPro or phone, whatever. Um, but I thought about it. I kicked it around it anyway. So maybe after a while. Other than that, that's all I got. We'll see you later.